Hey guys, this is Aaron with Get Your Geek On Radio. I'm here with Jeff Ramsey, one of the co-founders of Rooster Teeth. Um, and I also believe you had a birthday a couple weeks ago. So happy belated birthday. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, on uh, June 19th, I turned 21. We'll say 21, exactly. Yeah, there you go. 21. And you, you know what, Keanu Reeves, you look breathtaking still. Ah. His words. <laughs> Thank you so, very much. Um, you know, I just want to ask you a couple questions about, uh, you know, what you've been doing right now. I know uh, you just actually had the Achievement Hunter panel downstairs for a little bit. And yes, sir. I know at the beginning of each video, you actually talk about how you had an experience when you were younger. I was wondering if you would elaborate on that or maybe say why you thought it was a paranormal kind of uh, thing. Well, I, I thought it was a paranormal experience because I met a ghost uh, and it scared the hell out of me. <laughs> um, when I was, I want to say I was like maybe seven or eight years old. Uh, I was living in Jacksonville, Florida, and uh, I won't draw this out, but essentially I went to the movies with my parents, I came home, the way the house worked is you go through the front door and there's like a wall and then the house splits and goes to the left are bedrooms, to the right is the kitchen, and beyond that wall are two open areas that then go down into a, like a living room. Okay. My parents went off to the kitchen, I was going to go to my bedroom. Uh, and as I turned left, I looked over and there was a woman in the, in the little down area, the living room area, sitting on, on the side of a chair. And uh, I thought it was odd yeah. that there would be a strange lady in our house. <laughs> but I was also a kid and she seemed like she belonged there. So I just went up to her and I said, hi, are, are, if you're looking for my parents, uh, are you looking for my parents? And she just stared at me very menacingly. And uh, she was dressed... Um, in like traditional Indian garb. I recognize now as like a Sarap, and um, at the time I don't think I had ever seen somebody dressed like that, so I was really confused as to, as to the way she looked. I didn't understand it. And, uh, and she just was like staring at me intently. And I walked into the room and I said, hi, uh, my, my parents are just right over there. Did you, wait a minute, why, why are you in the house? And she just kept looking at me in this like really scary, menacingly way. And I kind of went white, uh, got, very cold, very terrified, ran into the kitchen to get my mom and, and my stepdad came back and she was gone. Oh, wow. I never saw her again. I didn't know what what to make of it, but it stuck with me my entire life. I can remember it like it was yesterday. It sounds like it. I mean, that's a lot of detail to remember from yeah, the, the and back then. Yeah, and ironically, my mother has no memory of it, so. Oh, wow. That's... But I, I know I didn't make it up. <laughs> as long as you know. Yeah. You know, you were there, so you should remember it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and the other thing too, uh, your Rooster Teeth has gotten so huge over the last about you know, 15 plus years now. Mm -hmm. If it didn't get as big as it is now, where do you think you would be today? Oh gosh, uh, where would I be? I think <laughs> Bernie one time told me, we were uh, shooting the shit late one night making Red vs. Blue, and he said, you know, if, if Red vs. Blue never happened, I kind of, he was like, <laughs> Like, I think he was just tired and kind of romanticizing what life would be like if we weren't up till four in the morning making, <laughs> making uh, episodes of Reverse Blue. And uh, we were talking about it, and he, he said, I feel like if Red vs. Blue never happened, you and I would be two grizzled, old, like, uh, beat-down comedians working some small comedy club every night of the week who both just, just didn't quite make it. Mm -hmm. But ma ma did well enough to, to pay the bills, <laughs> and just we would just be getting older and 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 more beat down and more disgruntled, uh, trying to tell jokes in the same comedy club for the rest of our lives. And I feel like that's pretty <laughs> apropos. Yeah, VC would still be in comedy though. Yeah, that exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, so I mean, again, you've been around for a long time. So, uh, what aspects of Rooster Teeth have aligned with like the original dream you had? Do you feel like? Uh, maybe someone's gone somewhere you didn't want it to, or uh, do you feel like you, it's exactly where you thought it would be? I wish, I used to always make the joke that, uh, if anything, uh, I'm disappointed. Like, I think we could have done better. <laughs> we should <laughs> we be further along. We only have this many million of people. Um, but I, the, the real truth is that we set out to make six episodes of a cartoon, mm -hmm. and we really didn't have any plans beyond that. And it just... It hit that cultural zeitgeist. It was right place, right time, and people supported it, and it spread like wildfire through word of mouth. I mean, this is before YouTube and Facebook right. at this point. Uh, so it was sites like Slashdot and Penny Arcade, uh, who and, and Fark .com who were sharing us, and um, and basically since that initial like that initial moment around episode three of Red vs. Blue where it kind of took off like wildfire, mm -hmm. we've just been holding on for dear life. And I wish I could say that I had the forethought to plan the next 16 years out and that I saw myself making a career, like from going from making a cartoon in Red vs. Blue uh, in, a, in the game of Halo mm -hmm. to ghost hunting 
in Australia. Yeah. I wish I could say that I, I drew the line out and saw that, but I, I absolutely did not. It's been way more uh, of a reactionary company than that, I think. Uh, that's great. That's awesome. So, you know, kind of speaking on that too, uh, what made you guys, what made you all, all think of Griff? Like, did you already see that character and you're like, you know what, that's who I'm going to be? Or did Bernie just say, hey, you know, this is yeah, one guy? I wish I could take credit for any of that. Um, Bernie wrote Red vs. Blue. He created those characters. And uh, I think that the one thing I will say is I think that our personalities over time have sort of bled into the characters a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that's why Griff is uh, lazy and uh, just <laughs> wants to eat junk food and is disaffected and super sarcastic. <laughs> uh, I'd like to think that I added a little bit th to that, but uh, I certainly can't take credit for, for the character. Well, that's cool, though. I mean, at least you, you got to add your personality to it, though. That's awesome. Sure. I mean, I, I, uh, I, I approached it with the work ethic that I have, and I think it bled through. <laughs> so. Oreos? Yeah, Oreos and, and, uh, and uh, what else does he eat? That's about oh, it. It's Oreos. About Oreos. It was yeah, the, the, he's on the, the vowel diet and only really eats anything things to start with vowels like Oh my gosh, asparagus I forgot about and Oreos that. and yeah. <laughs> I think it was just Oreos at one point though he said or something. Um, and so, you know, being on Achievement Hunter, I know you, you founded that one as well. Mm -hmm. Do who do you do you feel there's like an unsung hero, like someone that doesn't get enough credit for doing all the stuff they do there? At Rooster Teeth or at Achievement Hunter? At Achievement Hunter. Oh, it's definitely me. Definitely you? Yeah, I don't. I, I give way too much credit to the other guys. I don't deserve it. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. We have an entire... I mean, everybody, everybody in Achievement Hunter literally busts their ass every single day. It's a very high volume, uh, high intensity, high expectation work environment. And people that... People don't last long mm -hmm. if they're not able to keep up with that. Right. And um, so everybody is all hands on deck at all times. But I will say that that entire support room where uh, Ashley and Jerem and Jacob and all those guys and girls work, uh, I think those people have to be the unsung heroes because they they keep us on track. People like Sarah keep, keep the lights on. They keep us moving. They make sure that uh, we stay on task and on schedule. And then, you know, the editors like Kent and Larry and, and, uh, and Jacob and Alec and, and all of them, they, uh, they make stuff that we, they make the stuff we do a lot funnier than it has any right to be. Okay. I'll say that. that that's awesome. I mean, it must be amazing having that support staff to back you guys. It is. It is. It a hundred percent is. And it's, it's amazing to see, to film something that's okay or mediocre. And then you turn around and you watch it two weeks later after their edits and you go, wow, they polished that turd. They really did. Wow. They made it way funnier than it has any right to be. And kind of bouncing off of that, how long does it roughly take you guys? Like I know you film one day, they have to go edit it. How, about, how long does that process take, do you think? That's probably a better question for Trevor at this point. He runs Achievement Hunter day to day. Okay. Um, he's the supervising producer of it, but uh, it depends on how difficult the video is. Um, you know, no two videos are, are the same, honestly. If it's a single screen, like a Ultimate Chicken Horse, yeah. uh, or like a General Jousting, or a Mario Kart, it can be filmed and edited in the same day. Okay. If it's a six or eight person Minecraft or GTA, it can take three, four days. It just, it really just depends on how long the video is, how complex it is, uh, how much of a narrative there is to try to tie together, you know? Yeah, no, that makes sense. And going off that as well, um, I know you're, you're doing Able to Succeed right now and you guys, I think, are mm -hmm. playing later today or, or tomorrow. Tomorrow, I mean, tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. What game is it that you like playing that you get, you're like, yeah, I'm glad we're going to film this one today? I love playing Siege. Uh, I do. I, I actually, as much as we grouse about it from time to time, I still really enjoy playing Minecraft. I have to oh, be yeah. in the right headspace to want to do it. Um, but I love Minecraft. I love GTA. To this day, I love GTA. Um, there, uh, Unfortunately, there are a lot of games that we really like to play that just don't, for whatever reason, don't catch on. Like, we all really enjoyed Apex. I had a mm -hmm. blast playing Apex, and I would go home every night and play it. Uh, after work, but that's one that the the audience just didn't respond to. So um, sometimes the games that are the most fun to play aren't the ones that we get to play the most. Right, since that's you have to go with what your audience. Yeah, you got to go with what the audience wants. Yeah. Okay. Um, I tried to think how to word this one too. Uh, I guess so. You, like you said, you have all these people working and everything. Who's your favorite there? Like, I know it's like kind of picking like your favorite child, but who's your, like your favorite person to work with there? When you're like, well, go into the office, you see Trevor, Michael. Who would you say would be like your, like, yeah, I'm going to work with him. It is right to say that it's like trying to pick your favorite child because I, <laughs> love, I love everybody for different reasons. And I go through phases where I'm really into one, like to, to performing with one person over the other. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I, I have a tremendous amount of chemistry, I think, with Gavin. And we have a great, great relationship. And I, I delight at any opportunity to film with him, uh, which the same could be said for most of those guys. But uh, right now, I'm really into Matt Bragg. 
Really? I'm, I, okay. I really dig everything that he's doing. I think he's really kind of comedically uh, hit his stride, and it's a lot of fun to work with him or around him and just mm -hmm. kind of watch him work. So I'll say Matt Bragg right now. Cool. And so is there any project coming up that are coming out that you're excited to, you know, the audience is going to get to see right now? Or is, is it just Achievement Haunter right now? Or what's, what's uh, where you at? Well, we, we always have a, a few things in the hopper. Um, we try not to announce stuff too early because as, say if we, if I pitch 10 shows or Achievement Hunter pitches 10 shows and we green light 10 shows, it's still possible only four or five of them will come out. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on, you know, the show's not working or going over budget, being too expensive, not being able to realize uh, and make the show in the way that we want to make it, so we decide not to hold off and do it later. Hardcore Tabletop is a great example of that. I wanted to make that for about three years before we finally did make it. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I'd had my dithers, we would have made it three years before and ha would have made a, a worse version of it. So it, it it was actually, the show was much improved by taking the time to make it right. So I'd be a bit remiss to announce any of those things that we have uh, in the works too early. But I will say there's one that is kind of our version of a travel show okay. that's going to be coming out in uh, the fall winter this year. Uh, and uh, it's something that Trevor and I created together and I'm I'm like 90% sure that's actually going to come out. So I'll just say that we have a travel show coming out that'll be different than other travel shows, and I think you guys will like it. That would be awesome. You know, appreciate you telling us that. Sure. Uh, speaking on that travel part, I know you've gone to Australia, mm -hmm. uh, California. Where's, like, your favorite place to go to? Uh, in the world to... F to f just on just vacation? A, just on vacation. For... Like, if you want... Like, I want to go chill. You know, take oh, a child. Oh, gosh. Uh, my favorite place in the world is probably Budapest, Hungary. Budapest, Hungary? Yeah, we went there years ago to work with a video game company and uh, fell in love with the city, made some tremendous friends, and uh, I've only I've, I've only been back two or three times, but any opportunity I have to go to Budapest, it's just like, it is the coolest, most modern, yet steeped in, in culture and interesting and uh, affordable city that I've ever been. That's I, awesome. I would, it's the one place I would consider leaving Austin for. Wow, could, yeah. that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Never thought of some, like, I would never have picked that place, honestly. I was, I'll be honest with you, I was fairly ignorant of, of Hungary yeah. uh, before I went, and I was a little nervous to go. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if it was going to be, like, Eastern Bloc, you know, like, I grew up in the Cold War, so I didn't know if it was going to be, like, stories you hear about, like, Eastern Bloc Germany or those Eastern Bloc countries when I was a kid, and uh, couldn't have been uh, more unfounded, my, my, my nerves and my fear. It is the most welcoming warm, kind, lovely place, and just gorgeous. That's so cool. I, 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 the same way, I've never been out there, and I have no idea about the country, so yeah. <laughs> I can feel you on that part. What about filming-wise? Is there a place you so far that you've like, that you're like, yeah, I want to go back and film out there? Uh, not really. Um, any place that I, in terms of filming, m most of the location stuff I do is related to, to Achievement Haunter, the ghost hunting stuff. Right. So anywhere I can go that has ghosts, I want to go and film, whether it be, you know, BFE, Tex East Texas, mm -hmm. or whether it be West Wickham, England. It doesn't really matter. I just I just want to go where the ghosts are. <laughs> just want to try to get that experience mm -hmm. again. Yeah, absolutely. That's cool. Um, so when you're looking at, you know, like, you know, Achievement Hunter or, you know, just doing another Let's Play or anything... How do you try to figure out who's going to mesh well with who? Like, you know, okay, well, I want Gavin for this or Michael for that. How do you figure that part out? Everyone has their strengths and weaknesses, and um, there are no hard and fast rules to it, but it's just something you kind of feel your way through over time. Okay. And uh, there, uh, definitely a lot of thought goes into it. Um, people have different... Obviously, Michael and, and Gavin have a different dynamic than Michael and Ryan do, mm -hmm. you know? Or Ryan and Jeremy have a certain dynamic, but then Ryan and Jack have a different dynamic. And it really... You just kind of take it on a case-by-case -case basis and you see, like, what uh, what flavor makes the most sense for, for what content. Okay. Well, awesome. And I, I do have one last question, kind of like sure. a fun one. So, I saw you used to bowl when you were younger. I did, yeah. Do you still bowl? Because I bowl, and, you know, if you still bowl, I kind of want to go, you know, maybe bowl against you. Maybe. <laughs> Uh, I I, uh, I have a complicated history with bowling. Uh oh. Um, I, I have, a, I, have a, I used to have a love hate relationship with bowling. Now I have kind of a love hate hate love hate hate relationship <laughs> with bowling. Uh, but I suffered an injury to my thumb, and because of it, I have some tendon damage, and Ooh. I'd be scared if I were to bowl again that I might damage my thumb, which I need uh, desperately to be mediocre at video games with. <laughs> yeah, so I've, exactly. I've, I've uh, hung up my bowling ball for good. Ah, oh. <laughs> sorry to say. No, no worries. Well, thank you again. You know, again, thank you, uh, Get Your Geek on Radio, and thank you again, Jeff, for being out here. Absolutely, really thank you it. so much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Yeah, y'all have a great day. Thanks.